What's up, everybody? Dirtbag Gaming here, the channel for casual raiders. I appreciate clicking on the video. Uh, we are today going to go over the top 10, in my opinion, uh, the best void that we're looking for in this game. Uh, it's not a crazy ranking. It's like the, the 10 best that I think will help your account out the most, not just like the one that can one-shot everybody. It's more of like where are they going to be used at most of the game, all right? So we're going to get into it. We're going to start off right away with the void now right now there's two times void something going on i didn't get any legos hopefully you guys got some legos but hopefully the guys that i picked in this list you actually picked uh this weekend but uh again this is top 10 but i couldn't pick just 10 because there's so many new ones that just got released uh so we're gonna go with 13 ish all right so we're gonna start off with the bottom three so i tied them all at 10. we're gonna start off with this guy right here uh ursiga warcaller all right so she actually just came out recently uh she's very beefy looking she's got like one of the coolest shields in the game uh but she's got an amazing kit so i picked her because of this obviously the ally protect but this skill right here this on this goes down to a three turn cooldown she's a void these are obviously all voids but attack all enemies plays a 30 percent decrease crit damage and a 50 percent decrease attack for two turns on targets whose attack is higher than this defense or than their defense. So any, you know, attack based champion, they're just going to like do less damage on you. So like, you're never going to get one shot in an arena. Uh, even in PVE, it's going to help out a lot. Uh, also place a 30% decrease speed debuff and 60% decrease defense defense, uh, for two turns. If targets whose attack is equal or, or lower than their defense. So basically like no matter who you're facing, it's going to put up a, a, a decrease something on the team. So it just makes your team last so much longer. And with her being almost 1,500 defense, 23,000 HP, she, she's just going to tank your entire team. It's going to be awesome. Her A1 attacks one enemy, has a 45% chance of placing a block cooldown. Anytime you have a block cooldown on A1, like you're just going to lock out the other team. Out of the 45 up to a 60% chance. Like that is, that is insane. Uh, for one time, so basically just locking out the other team uh, based off of HP. Uh, and this one places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. And places a 25% strength and buff on this champion for two turns. So basically she's going to be taking less damage uh, while protecting your other team. Her passive decreases the damage all allies receive from critical hits by 30%. Now in Rena, how often are you going against guys that have 100% crit rate? Almost all, all the time. Uh, by 30% though, like that is such a huge decrease of um, damage. This champion will receive the damage instead. So, putting her in like a shield set, uh, she's going to have a ton of HP. We've seen a lot of champions in this game that have over, you know, 70, 80, 90, even sometimes 100k HP. She's going to be one of those champions. She's going to be the one that you just put a shield buff on, get as much uh, HP, defense, even speed. Like, I also picked her because look at the speed 108 speed for how freaking big she is. Seriously? <laughs> 100. An eight speed on an HP deep like why? <laughs> so I tied her at number ten, guys. Uh, again, if you think you know they're gonna be higher in ranking, don't worry. If they're on this list, I definitely think they're worth it. Uh, increases ally HP in all battles, another great order by thirty three percent. All right, so that that's the first one. So looking at that champion, how do we? It's crazy because like there's gonna be champions better than that that we're looking for. So but let's get into it. Uh, I also tied at number 10. This is a, a, a person that a lot of people get, and if they do get, their arena team is almost set. I don't know if you guys can guess it, but it's going to be right here. Thank you, So it's going to be Hegemon. So Hegemon is a game changer for PvP, uh, and why that is is because this right here always goes first each round. What? <laughs> they just like threw that in the game for no reason. Uh, if multiple headbonds are on the battle, the on high speed will go first, uh, followed by the next highs and so on. So he's got a uh, work, uh, ally crit rate in all battles by 19%. So kind of like the bad ally 25, but this is 19. This one attacks two times at random. Each hit has a 35% chance up to a 45, 50% chance of placing a 30% decrease speed debuff. Um, most of the time, these guys, if you just build them, since you don't care about the speed, if you want, he's going to go first in PvP, so if you build him with as much crit damage and crit rate, even if you want him to be a leader, you just build him with a million crit damage, 
um, and then 19% less crit rate, he just sometimes they just one shot the entire team, which is nuts because of the skill right here. Attacks all enemies, uh, plays a 50% decreased attack debuff for two turns, uh, also has a 50% of placing a block cooldowns skill buff for two turns. So this is basically like you can lock out the, the entire other team uh, and it decreases their uh, attack. So their retaliation isn't going to be as strong, but this is kind of what he does right when he, right when he goes first. So that's kind of why I picked Hedmon. Again, these are people that you can use kind of all over, but this guy is definitely a game changer for PvP. Um, he's so cool if, if you guys look how many reviews he has. Like, that's, that's nuts. All right, so also tied at number 10. Uh, some of you guys actually might have got him this weekend because it was a times 10 event. But we're going to go with the newer dwarf guy, Tormin. So everyone knows Tormin. Tormin has actually gotten a buff recently. Uh, to make it even more annoying to face him. So he's got a passive that has a 20% chance of placing a freeze debuff on an enemy each time they receive a buff or have the turn meter filled. The 20% chance applies to twice per enemy or twice per enemy turn, uh, once for the buffs and once for the turn meter fills. <laughs> so basically if you're, uh, if you're going second, you don't really care because once their Arbiter buffs up the team, they're putting a buff up and they're boosting up the turn meter. So basically that's two chances per person to freeze the other team as long as your accuracy is good enough. Uh, most of the time people build a tournament with a crap ton of accuracy because you're always putting up a freeze. Uh, in this case, their enemy is receiving multiple of these effects at the same time. So <clears throat> you can receive at the same time. Does not work with the effects from artifact sets, turn meter filling, effect from masteries, healing or those effects um, take place. In start. Okay, so it's not going to work if like you have uh your masteries that that, that boost up the terminator which is good because i think everybody has that but that right there just stops everybody <laughs> like i wanted him so bad but but if you got him build him with a crap ton of defense a crap ton of accuracy uh if you want resistance it's definitely gonna be good for him he would definitely be my resistance team 100 percent he's got an aura uh increases the ally defense in all battles by 33 percent which is huge like 33 percent of the defense is increased so it's A1. I've seen some torments hit really hard uh, with a ton of accuracy, and it's it's worth it. So A1 attacks all enemies. So he's got an A1 that attacks all enemies. Has a 15% 15, 15 chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn. Instantly activates the skill when an, ever an enemy, both a freeze and an HP debuff, takes damage from the HP debuff. So basically anytime that somebody has this on them, the HP buff, uh, burn, He's just automatically going to do his A1 no matter, like, he's kind of cutting into people's turns. Anytime somebody cuts in the turn like him and Rotos, it's just, it's, it's worth it. As uh, it's A2. I sometimes forget that he actually has this, because he removes all buffs from the target enemy. Again, why accuracy is so good on him. Uh, then attacks the target two times, steals all buffs instead of the target if they're under freeze debuff. Will ignore defense if the target's under both freeze and HP burn. Debuff. So pairing him with somebody else that has an HP burn uh, will be great. It's not needed though. Uh, he has just so much CC himself. He can hit really hard on uh, his accuracy. Just takes away buffs and, and steals it at the same time. Like, and he looks really cool. Definitely a cool door. Uh, A3. Attacks all enemies again. Places a block buff debuff and 100% heal reduction for two turns on enemies on a freeze debuff. Uh, has a 60% chance of placing a provoke debuff, which happens a lot. Uh, for one turn on enemies not under freeze debuff. So basically, if you're under freeze debuff, you get heal reduction and block buffs. And if you're not, you get provoked. That's fair. That's that's super fun to play against. Uh, decreases the cooldown of one random skill for each ally by one turn for every enemy attack under both. Okay, so he definitely pairs very, very well with HP burn uh, people, which they're on a ton in this game, but... The Lego that you're getting for free in the uh, 3v3 as long as you log in every single day and, you know, buy it. Uh, he'll pair really well with him because anybody who attacks that guy gets HP burn and then if he comes in, it's just very, very good combo. His passive, uh, again, we already went over that, but all right, so that's basically Torrent. Now, why, again, why Torrent is so annoying is just because it, it works on both. Uh, increase ally um, buffs, also increase Terminator. So if that happens at the same time, that's two chances to get frozen. Uh, again, if his accuracy is very up, which it should be, it's awesome. His resist starts at 70% or 70, by the way. 
So that, that's really good. He's at 94 speed, but he's not... He, he's he's going to pretty good at me. Like, like, you're not, like, always going to have him go first. He's kind of there just kind of, like, annoy the other team beyond control, which he does very, very well. All right, so that was the three people tied at 10th place. Now, going up from there, let's see what we got. Going up, I got a person that I, I don't have. <laughs> I don't have most of these. But uh, we have Forks. We're going with this guy right here, Warlord. Now, why I picked Warlord for number nine is because he locks out the other team. He puts up shield buffs and he heals people a lot. So his A1 attacks one enemy, has a 25% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on that target for one turn. So 25 up to a 35, 40% chance once he's booked out. So basically just attacking somebody with an A1, he has the chance to increase all the durations. So anytime somebody's duration is increased, they're kind of locked out. They only have to do their A1 and most of the time A1 in arena doesn't hit hard at all, even in a uh, PvE. So this one uh, places a block debuffs uh, on all allies for one turn, then places a shield buff on all allies equal to 30% of this champion's max HP. So anybody who has this champion's max HP, you can really just kind of solo that champion instead of trying to get everybody's HP up really high. If his HP is up really high, that shield actually is very, very, is a lot. You get him up to 90k HP, that's 30,000 uh, HP shield placed on your allies for two turns and heals all allies by 25% of their max HP. So basically like he's healing, this is a three turn cooldown. So he's putting a shield up every three turns and healing people every three turns. You bring this guy anywhere, he's a void. He's, he's gonna be good. He's gonna support your team a lot. This one attacks all enemies and has a 70, 80, 90, 100% chance of putting each target skills on cooldown which again is huge, it just locks out the other team. His base speed is 100, so he's gonna go first. I mean, he's gonna be fast in the arena. So him doing this uh, as an AOE in the arena, but for the other team, you basically won. Like, you're all, it's almost an auto win. Uh, the only person that you can get besides this guy, I would say is Basher. Basher does a similar skill attack to all enemies and puts everybody's uh, skills in cooldown uh, for two turns. So it has a 30% chance to fully deplete each target's turn meter. That's kind of what separates him from Basher, is he also has 30, 40, 50, 60% chance of fully depleting each target's turn meter. So getting the accuracy up a lot for this guy, getting his speed up a lot, and if you want him to hit hard, obviously parry and crit damage. But mainly I would focus on this guy is the HP, uh, speed, and accuracy. HP, speed, and accuracy is what you really want with Warlord. Uh, his aura, uh, all resist. Ally resist in all battles by 80%, which is good. Uh, that would be crucial in my uh, shield wall PvP resistance team. But that's what I went for number nine was Warlord. Now, number eight was kind of like I was in between two or three people, but I picked the guy that just nukes beyond belief, would be Ethos. So Ethos, I picked as number uh, eight. You see him a lot in Doom Tower right now just because he. he He's one of the strongest nukers, if not the strongest nuker in the game. Uh, it's copy, rinse, repeat, skin. Uh, there's a lot of people that kind of look like him. I'm not sure if they have this like big thing in the back though. But let's go over skills. So he is 1600 attack. Uh, that's a crap ton of attack. Now what separates him from everybody else is this one right here. So attacks all enemies down to a four turn uh, cooldown. This attack is always critical. Now. What does that mean? That means that you don't need any crit rate if you want to only focus on this attack, but you also have attack all enemies three times, plays the 15% weak and debuff and two for two turns. So basically you need crit for this one, but he has a crit aura uh, in arena for 33%, which is huge. So I'm thinking if he's a, on, on a good second team, <laughs> you kind of let him die, whatever, bring him back and then he just nukes everybody down with this skill right here. So. I've seen people with 300, 330 uh, crit damage because if you just focus on this guy with attack, speed, and crit damage, he's going to nuke down literally everybody. Um, that, that is insane. Always crit. No focus on crit whatsoever. It's got an A1 attack for one enemy has a 20% chance of creating an extra turn. Decreases enemy max HP by 15% of damage dealt, dealt so that's not bad. Uh, crit for the, I think, Scare. This might work for... Decrease damage and max it. Yeah, so Scare Boss, the Scare King, new, new uh, do in um, Doom Tower. But uh, guys like that right there, it's it's going to help out a lot, especially in Doom Tower. This guy helps out with uh, 
very, very fast speed runs, uh, just kind of nuking the entire wave. So he's got two AoE attacks, and he gets really freaking hard. So definitely great. So that is my number eight. Pretty simple. Uh, number seven. Now I picked this person uh, because if you get her, she is kind of like another Draco, but for voice. And if you haven't guessed her already, it is Venus. So Venus I picked, again, because she's just a clan boss champ. Like, she looks awesome. She's cool aesthetic. Um, she's got a partner ability with uh, Seth uh, Cupidus. But I picked her because she has this right here. Weaken and decrease defense on a three-turn cool, uh, cooldown without any books. So you don't even need to book this person out if you really want her just to be your clan boss champ. Uh, also, has an HP burn for the clan boss. Attack the enemies with a 50% chance of placing an HP burn debuff for two turns. And on her A1, attacks one, one enemy two times. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing 5% of the big poison uh, for two turns. So basically on a counterattack team, she's just putting up poison left and right. She's giving you your defense down and your weaken at the same time. Uh, and if you have Cupidus, so it removes all buffs from all enemies, has a 50% chance of granting an extra turn. Uh, if you have Cupidus. So it's a cool pair. Um, but mainly you're having her for these three things for the clan boss. Like these are just made for the clan boss. So again, these pe these people that I'm picking the voids are mainly because they're going to change your account. So luckily, if people who get Venus and you don't have a Draco, you're all set. If you have both, that's probably your Draco, but it wouldn't hurt to have Venus there as well. <laughs> uh, her aura is decreased ally HP in all battles. Uh, if you're noticing, most of the people I'm picking have really good auras. Uh, in all battles by 33%. Huge, huge aura uh, for a boy champion. So that is my number seven. Number six, I switched between three people, but number six, uh, we're going back out. Don't worry, sir. We'll come back to you. Uh, we picked a new guy. This, I think, is my new favorite champion uh, right here. Neck, neck, right? Neck, right? The great. Uh, one of the Roman soldiers that died, he's got like seven things. Like I, I said, player, you move this guy's head because you're taken away from the the spear. But this guy is freaking cool. Like, he is so awesome. Uh, you get, he, he's just awesome. Let's go over skills. <laughs> uh, first off, he's got 1,300 base defense. He's got 21,000 base health, 97 uh, speed, um, and 50 uh, resistance starting off. His aura is a resistance by 60% of all battles, or 60. Uh, his A1 attacks one enemy three times, fire net right there, or uh, clan boss. Each hit has a 20% chance of placing a 50% decrease uh, attack, so 20 up to a 30% chance. Uh, for one turn, this effect cannot be resisted. So, that's awesome. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, space off defense, which is great. Anybody who has a defense champion in clan boss, or really anywhere, is just going to do a crap ton of damage. He's basically building to be tanky and do damage at the same time. But the A1 is phenomenal. You don't have Ulton, bring this guy in right there. Teams up with all allies, so we, we don't have just a, an awesome... Dude, we actually have a team up champion. So team up with all allies to attack one enemy, which is usually the clan boss. All allies with their ally protect buff uh, placed by this champion will join the attack. Allies joining the attack will use their default skills. Grants an extra turn if this uh, attack does not kill the target. So basically the clan boss, you're not going to kill him. So you're always going to get an extra turn. So this basically goes from a four turn down to a three turn um, every time you use it. So if you think about it, it's a four turn, but once you use it, it goes down to a three turn and kind of shaves off the skills of everything else. But you're definitely going to want to book that up. Definitely going to book out this whole champion. <laughs> uh, A3 plays a block debuff uh, and 50% ally protection buff and 25% strength buff on all on an ally for three turns. So basically you doing this uh, goes down to three turn, essentially down to a two turn cooldown. Um, you're almost going to be able to get your, your entire team in every single time. And he could get the uh, mastery to kind of uh, extend the buffs. So him extending it to a four turn would be awesome because now you're just going to counter with everybody on your team. Whenever an ally is uh, attacked while under an ally protection buff, placed by this champion, place the shield buff on the ally equal to 30% of, guess what, this champion's max HP for two turns. Wow. Occurs only if the ally does not already have a shield buff 
plays on this champion. Okay, so basically you're not going to stack the shield, but in clan box you're not going to have a shield buff unless you bring the Valkyrie or anything like that, which some people don't have, I don't. <laughs> also decreases the, the cooldown of this champion's Legion of the Dam skill by two turns if the shield buff is placed. Okay, so there you go, that just made this even better. It's basically decreasing it even more, so you're almost always going to be doing the Legion of the Damned, because this is just a passive. So anybody that's struck with that odd protection, which you're always going to have it on, this is a passive, so you're always going to be doing this a lot more than what we even expected. Place a block debuff and a 25% strength in, uh, buff for three turns. Um, for three turns on the ally with the lowest max HP at the start of each round. Also place a 50% ally protection buff on them for six turns. This guy just loves this team. Like, he is literally the definition of a Roman soldier uh, with the shield. Um, so I want this guy, I put him again as number six because he does a lot, like he definitely helps out your team a lot, but he's not top five, I don't think. I mean, he's very, very cool. He's brand new to the game. There's only 97 reviews on him, but look at, look at the reviews. I know you don't really trust these, but they're pretty good. <laughs> if I get him, I, he's going to literally have my best gear on my, on my entire account. I'll probably get him up to 100k if I can. Uh, so yeah, that is number six. Now let's get back to... The Sir Nicholas. Sir Nicholas, I picked as number five because with a Sir Nick, you can do a lot with Flame Boss. You can do a lot with anything. He's good in PvP, he's good in PvE, he's good for the Flame Boss. So he is my top five pick because of that right there. The unkillable buff. So if you have anybody that has an unkillable buff, it just it helps you kind of tweak uh, certain comps to just never die. Uh, him with a man eater, or him with a man eater, him with Anybody else that has this, uh, I'm making a video where, like, if you have him and um, a certain comp, you only need one unkillable person. Uh, or if you pair with a, a skull crusher, you can have him and a skull crusher uh, not die in the plane boss. So I picked him. Very, very good champ. Uh, he's he's kind of older. Like, he, he, I think he was at Fusion uh, a year or two ago. I uh, wasn't around at the time for Fusion, but I wish I was because he's very, very good. A1. Attacks one enemy has a 50% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn. This uh, debuff cannot be resisted. So if it procs, you're frozen. Um, based off his HP, HP type champion. This one attacks all enemies, uh, places the shield buff on all allies for two turns. The value of shield buff is equal to 30% of the damage inflicted. So you can get this guy to hit really hard. Now, look at this 105 speed. He's going to be very, very fast for the arena. Uh, he's going to hit very, very hard. He does it very, very hard for the arena. And it's an AOE hit. So basically, you're, you're doing that on everybody. I think he does this for his auto. So you get this done with a 3-10 cooldown. But you do this on auto, and then next turn, if you know, once nobody dies, he puts up the unkillable buff and heals them all back up. This gets down to a 4-10 cooldown. Plays an unkillable buff and 15% continuous heal buff on all that for 2 turns. So being unkillable and never dying in PvP is, is amazing. Helps with PvE, helps with clan walls. Like, like I said, Top five, Sir Nicholas, increased ally and HP and all battles with 33%. Great, great, great champion. All right, what do we got next? We are going top. This is number four. All right, so number four, you guys are like, why the hell is this guy number four? Number four is, oh, by the way, I'm not including her or Arbiter. I probably should have said that in the beginning, but her and Arbiter are kind of like, duh. <laughs> Um, I don't want to waste the spot knowing that they're already good, plus everybody should have them at a certain time. Uh, so if we're going to change that you have to like pull or do something else to get them, but yeah. So this guy, Blind Seer. Now why Blind Seer? Blind Seer got buffed recently. Look at that base speed. 115. Wow, okay. 115, she's a support champion, but why I picked her? Because if you have her, she definitely helps out uh, changing the accounts. Now why? It's because of this right here. So it revives all allies, all dead allies at, uh, to 35% place to a block damage buff on all allies, uh, except this champion for one turn. So basically, she's going to help out your account. You get this person, she's going to revive up everybody on the five turn cooldown. She's super fast. She's, she's going to be lapping the PvE people, PvP people, and she's going to be rezzing up your entire team and having them not die again. So sometimes when you res somebody up, they still could die. Like they still just get one shot again because they're the turn meter isn't all the way up, but if they have block damage, you're good to go, especially in PvE, because most of the time you don't, they don't have people that block that or ignore that. 
Her E2 plays the block debuffs all my allies for two turns, then plays the shield buff on my allies equal to 30% of this champion's max HP. Uh, starts off with 18,000, not bad. Uh, but definitely doing this, like especially when she first starts with 115 speed, is going to be awesome. Attack three times at random, so great for Fire Knight and Clan Boss. Uh, each hit has a 30% chance of decreasing the target's turn, being up by 15%. So this in Doom Tower is insane. Being able to have that much speed and on an A1, decrease the uh, turn meter by 15% is phenomenal. Uh, plus being able to ride your up your team and put a block damage buff is awesome. You can make her super high resistance, uh, especially for Doom Tower, and a lot of speed and it should be clutch. So HP, speed, and resistance is definitely what I would suggest for a blind seer, because then she just won't die. Uh, increase the ally defense in all battles by 34%. That's definitely one of the highest defensive uh, ores in the game. Um, so yeah, that, that's why she made it to number four. I, I picked her over uh, Sir Nicholas just because she has the uh, ally res, full ally res, uh, plus the block damage buff. So again, if you think they, they rank differently, leave in the comments. I believe you, trust me. If you guys have any, one, any of these champions, congrats because they will change your account. That's kind of why I'm doing this video, just to show you. If you get these guys, congrats because they're freaking awesome. Number three. All right, now we are at top three. If you guys haven't guessed, this was hard. But top three, I'm just going to start with her. Sippy the Lost Bride. I don't know how many times I faced a Sippy and she just laughed at me on how much non-damage I did to her. <laughs> she is so tanky uh, in PvP and PvE that if you get her, she's, she's just going to carry you through almost all the content in the game. A1, so has, attacks one enemy, has an 80% chance, up to 100% chance of placing a sleep debuff for one turn if the target's turn meter is equal or above 50%, this uh, this debuff cannot be resisted. Heals all allies by 5% of their max HP if the target's turn meter is below 50%. So I've actually faced this person in Doom Tower twice, so there was two of these on a stage, and I couldn't beat them because she just kept healing her whole team like 50k every single turn. Uh, look at that pass. Heals each ally 10% of their max HP. So in Doom Tower, how much does their HP start with? A lot. <laughs> uh, has a 40% chance of removing Freeze and Fury debuffs from each ally at the start of the turn. Phenomenal. And removes all debuffs from Rotos. So if you have Rotos, amazing pair at the start of the turn if they're, no, uh, if they're on the same team. So cool pair. Uh, if you have both, I don't have Sippy, I have Rotos, but I want a Sippy. A3, revives because she uses a reviver as well, so she doesn't die and she has a revive. Revives a single ally with 55% HP, full turn meter. The only other person I know for that is Cardinal. Um, places a 50% increased attack, so it just buffs them up. And a 30% increased crit rate on that ally for two turns. So awesome, awesome res, down to a 4 turn cooldown. Her A2 plays the block debuff, which is awesome, on all allies for two turns, then fills the turn meter of all allies by 10% and plays 60% increased defense buff by 30% and 30% increased speed. So basically, you just buff up your entire team and boost your turn meter at the same time. So when she goes first, she's 114 speed, one less speed than, than the last blind seer, but she's amazing. Like, you get her, she will change your account for the better. That's why she beat uh, the other two people, um, Sir Nick and Blindseer, but I definitely think she is amazing. Uh, very, very good Lego in the game. Ally resistance, all battles by 80%. So you make her a lead in, uh, God, I wish I had in um, PvP and a resist team, they're just never going to die. <laughs> like, they're going to be so annoying that opponent's going to quit uh, because they can't kill them. 21k base HP, 1300 uh, defense, 114 speed. Very, very good champion. Now, number two. Number two. Going back up top. High Elves. Is she High Elves? No, she's Buck Dragon. She's not. <laughs> high Elves here. No, crap, she is a Banner Lord. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Raglan. Why is Raglan above Sippy? Provides an ally with 75% HP and full turn meter on a two turn cooldown. 104 base speed. She is one of the top resers 
in the entire game, if not the best res in the entire game, uh, removes all the buffs from all allies, then heals them. The amount, uh, heal amount is proportional to this champion's attack. 1100 uh, base attack, 1000 defense, 20,000 HP. She is, she's just so hard to kill. Like, I've seen her in PvP a lot, and she's very, 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 she looks really cool too. But having a Rezzer in the Battle Lords, um, if you have her, your, your faction wars is done, she can help out in PvP, clan balls, not clan balls, uh, dungeons, uh, Doom Tower, like, she is awesome champion. Her A1, attacks one enemy three times by her night, fills the turn meter, uh, three random allies by 15%. Allies can have their turn meter filled once per turn by the, by the skill. So, make her super fast. Make her super high resistance. Make her super tanky. Uh, and she will help you out so much. But I just love this skill. Like, <laughs> a two turn revive. Basically, like, she revives somebody. She's so fast that she just, you know, heals them and, and does this. Um, but then she just revives them again. Like, she literally just keeps reviving people over and over. Put her on your resist team and nobody will die. That's the best part of No wonder. She's very, very cool. Now, guys, if you haven't seen it before or if you haven't guessed, my number one champion, number one most wanted champion uh, that can help you and change your accounts, Chris. Why? Look at that. He's like the Ninja Turtle guy, Shredder, dude. So when he came out, I, I know I, I, I didn't even care about it. Like, I didn't look at him, I didn't, I didn't do it. I mean, I wasn't as big into the game as I am now, but <laughs> this guy starts <laughs> with a shield. <laughs> at the start of each round, plays a shield buff on all allies for two. So he just has it built into his kit. He doesn't even need a shield set. Uh, equal to 50% of this champion's max HP. Holy crap. Has 75% chance of placing 60%. So that happens all the time. 75, 85, so 100% chance. So anytime somebody attacks them, he's putting up a decreased defense and a decreased attack on the enemy. What? <laughs> that is, that's a passive. That is so cool. I mean, you can take away the, the, this with like a, a cleanser, but still just having that as a passive guy. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to be kitted out. He doesn't have to be geared out. He literally just has to have that as a passive, and you, your whole team gets it. All right, A1, attacks on this. A1, AoE, phenomenal. On a defense champion. Attacks on it means there's 30% chance of placing a 30% decrease speed buff two times. So you put uh, accuracy on this crit, he's going to be one of your, the best champion you have. Um, almost 20 KHP, 1500 defense. 94 speed, not the best, but still 94 speed. Uh, 50 or 50 resistance already has 10 accuracy. Uh, E2 attacks all enemies, so another AOE. Plays a 50% ally protection buff on all allies, uh, except this champion for two turns, and places two 15 continuous heal buffs. So two of them, so like a bad L uh, for on this champion for one turn, increases the duration of all ally buffs for one turn. So he's buffing up your team. He's healing himself. He's like. He's he's on, on a three tank one. So awesome, right? Uh this one places a provoke, so needing accuracy. Debuff on all enemies for one turn. Um down to a three turn cooldown. Plays a sixty percent increased defense on this champion for two turns, and plays a thirty percent increase uh speed on all allies except the champion for two turns. So basically he provokes everybody, increases the defense at the same time, uh, and he increases everybody on the speed. So I've actually seen Chris last last in PvP by himself with this skill on a 3 turn cooldown and this uh, and he's doing this every single time but he's just he's healing up so much that if it's just me versus Chris like one guy like I've had Rose die so many times to, to Chris because I would run in hit him get decreased defense and attack on myself he would come in hit me down to 50% I'd come in hit him he'd come in hit me he'd heal like it would just go back and forth and he would win because he just outlasts the, the the other team. So guys, this is my number one champion, Void, uh, that I would suggest, again, everybody is up to their opinions, but I would suggest that you guys get this guy. He's a game changer, he's gonna change your account, he's gonna help out in a lot of areas of the game, and just having a 50% shield on you at the start of every turn, the waves are just gonna be like, 
uh, I'd pick you up and just walk away. <laughs> so, guys, let me know what you think. Did I miss anybody? Uh, am I going to get comments by, no, you should get, no, let, let me know. Like, let me know if I missed anybody, if I should add somebody. If you think somebody should be higher than the other, let me know. I love, you know, talking about the game. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. We just got the Discord up and running. Uh, we're doing account takeovers. Um, we're, this is the Void uh, Legendary video. We're going to do a Void Epic video. And we're also going to do a Void Rare video. Uh, so if you haven't looked at uh, look those yet, they'll probably be in the links uh, below. Um, but if not, check those out. Uh, but guys, if you have any of these, congratulations. Um, hit the like if you do, because I definitely want some of them. Um, I think the most person I want is this guy. I know he's not my number one, but I would want this guy so bad in this game. I just think he's so fun. And he's brand new. So guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for clicking on the video. You guys are awesome. Good luck with everything and enjoy the rest of uh, the week.